And when you're out in the world, when you're not in the church, it's kind of fair game to talk about whoever you want, whenever you want, right? If you want to talk about your coworkers at work with your other coworkers, that's not exactly frowned upon, right? As long as they don't find out. Then it's just awkward, right? And when you're out with your friends and family, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, after the pleasantries and how's your life going, what does it turn to? Oh, do you remember so-and-so that lived down the street? And oh, do you remember my high school friends? Or, you know, you get out with your buddies from high school and then you're going through Facebook and like, look at this dude, right? He was an athlete, now he's just balding and has a beer gut, right? Working at wherever. But when you're a part of God's kingdom, we should be at work to quench to subdue gossip, rumors, and slander when we encounter it. So we're going to take some wisdom now from the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, and we're going to apply this to this issue of what do we do with information spreading around our community whenever there's conflict. So our passage today is Proverbs 26, verses 20 to 22. You can follow along on the screen. Um, in the Bible, it's the NLT version, um, if you got one of those, or the Bible app. So Proverbs 26, verses 20 to 22. Fire goes out without wood, and quarrels disappear when gossip stops. A quarrelsome person starts fights as easily as hot embers light charcoal or fire lights wood. Rumors are dainty morsels mm, that sink deep into one's heart. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to your wisdom on how to deal with the spread of information in our communities. Father, that we would be a people that would call each other to healthy ways um, of dealing with conflict and helping each other. Father, that we would be the type of people that you would be honored by the way that we use our voice and the way that we talk to others. And Father, I pray that you would just open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to your message this morning. Tell us of the situations that you want us to be better at. Show us the ways that we can help our friends and family to follow a different path than the way of the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I know it feels like forever ago, but do you guys remember March of 2020? <laughs> right? Rumors and gossip swirling about a new virus from China, right? And this virus has videos of thousands of people getting sick over there and the hospitals overflowing with patients and draconian measures being put into place on the populace in China. It looked like some like World War Z kind of like movie type stuff of like pandemics and post-apocalyptic stuff happening. And then you turn on your TV and you see news reports, right, of their homes being padlocked by government officials. And you saw videos on the internet of people being taken away from their homes by people wearing hazmat suits, being loaded into an unmarked van idling on the street. And then we began to hear rumors about the virus spreading to the United States, right? With outbreaks in Seattle, Austin, New York. And what happens? Fear settles in, begins to grip Americans, and they start to wonder, what is the government going to do? And when are they going to lock me in my house? And when are they going to cart me away to places of quarantine? And a great unknown was sweeping over the land. What was coronavirus, right? How dangerous was it? Was there any cure? Does it come in that specific brand of beer? Because no one wanted to buy that during that time, right? And which movie star is going to survive the pandemic to star in a movie about this time, right? I'm still waiting for that movie to come out. I figure it's about five years. A little too soon right now, right? And Americans started to react the way that Americans know how to react. We started panic buying, right? Uh, so we ran out. We bought whatever masks we could get them. And you'd see people wearing, like, welding masks out in public, right? And then we started buying hand sanitizer by the gallon, and then once those things were gone from the store, we bought out the entire store supply of toilet paper. And to this day, why, right? <laughs> Probably due to the rumors and gossip that China was going to be a post-apocalyptic wasteland by this virus, and most of our goods are made in China, right? 
And because the news started reporting instances of panic buying, where we saw pictures of empty shelves and people leaving grocery stores with like six things of toilet paper stacked up in their cart. And we began to think to ourselves, holy crap. See what I did there? Holy crap. All right, it landed. I appreciate it. Dad joke for the morning, right? And we begin to have that panic rising up within us, like, do they know something I don't? And then we rush to the stores to try and find our toilet paper, right? So that our kids wouldn't have to use, like, pine cones or leaves from the yard, right? <laughs> Rumor, gossip, slander, the spreading of information from one person to another, from groups of people to other groups of people. It's its tale as old as time, Right? Now, the difference between gossip, rumors, and slander, let's talk about that for a second, right? Because gossip is the spreading of the fire of information about someone, right? It's when you meet up with someone at the grocery store and they say, have you heard that Bob is getting a divorce? Hmm, right? And then you start talking about Bob, right? Yeah, he was always kind of a grumpy drunk dude. Doesn't surprise me that you wanted to leave him, right? And then gossip can be where you start telling things that might be completely true, right? Like, yeah, they are. Or it can be things that are false. Gossip doesn't care. Gossip is simply when you talk to others and spread information about other people who are not there. And rumors are the information that you talk about. I heard that Bob was having a midlife crisis. Well, I heard that Sally was having an emotional affair at work, and that's why they're getting a divorce, right? Rumors are the specific little things that we talk about while we gossip. And those rumors can be true, or those rumors can be false. Usually, there's a little bit of both in every rumor, right? Because the people talking about it generally don't have all the information, so they're filling in the blanks with their what-ifs, their conjecture, their own perception and experience. And then there's slander, where the rumors are false and defamatory to someone. This could be someone making something up and fa fabricating lies. Do you remember middle school and high school, right? And you heard the rumors about that one girl who was, you know, sleeping with everybody or that one dude who was cheating on his girlfriend, right? And it's these things that are false. Or it's someone believing something to be true that actually isn't true, right? They're just mistaken, but they're passing along that information. And the running around and the telling other people about it through gossip, right? And the trouble with slander and rumor is that it's very difficult to tell the difference between the two, right? When we spread rumors, we might not have all the information behind it. It might be true, might not be. So if we spread rumors with other people through gossip, well, we might also be spreading slander against those people, wittingly or unwittingly. And church, whenever conflict happens, well-intentioned people start to talk, right? Start to gossip. Take, for instance, the picture of how this goes. Let's say Bob and Sally, and I did my stick figure drawings here, so please be gentle, right? I'm working on that whole graphic design degree thing. Um, got a few other problems to take care of in the middle. But right now, so Bob and Sally, right, they're in conflict, a pretty heavy conflict with a significant relationship that's on the line. Now, they want to talk to others about this thing going on in their life, right? And like a virus, the story begins to spread. So they reach out to friends and family, right, to tell their side of the story. Sally says Bob is a drunk and a womanizer and spends all their money on silly things. Bob says Sally neglects him and doesn't appreciate how hard he works, right? And then those family and friends will do what? Tell their family and friends what they remember about what's said, right? And these people are like sick people sneezing, right? They're just kind of like spreading whatever was given to them. And here's where the telephone game begins to play. Well, I heard from Ralph, who heard it from Jim Bob, who heard it from this, that that person said, right? And then they'll probably throw in their own understandings or thoughts about the other person. So the conflict, instead of just between Sally and Bob, is now this massive conflict. And there's new pieces of information, and it becomes strange to those who knew the truth, right? 
And now the conflict isn't just about the incident that happened, but now it's drudging up everything else around these two people. Do you remember that time Bob yelled at his kid? Oh, he must be a terrible parent, and that's why his wife wanted to leave, right? And pretty soon, you have a group of people on one side of the story, and all their misgivings about the other person, and then you have another group of people who all have a different side of the story and have their misgivings about the other person, right? And it becomes campy. And then you have some people caught in the middle, right? between the two groups because they're friends with both people and they're in this tug of war to choose a side. And pretty soon, a conflict that started between two people has erupted into a conflict between two groups of people who vilify, condemn, are angry. And they feel self-righteous about their own thoughts and the beliefs that they have and they stop listening and then they get into their flight or fight responses, and things get ugly. Um, anyone know West Side Story? We had to watch it in music class, right? Disney just made a remake, right? The Jets and Sharks, right? The rival gangs, this is that. Packers and Vikings fans, yeah? Bold of you, Tyler, way in the back, wearing a Rogers jersey and a Green Bay Packers hoodie over it. Double down this morning, right? This diagram, right? Two groups of people at war, right? Israel, West Bank, right? Democrats, Republicans, election season next year. Who's ready for that? You guys looking forward to all the rumors, gossip, and slander? Yeah? This is the quarrels that our passage tells us about today and how easily fire can spread when there is charcoal or wood to burn them for that fire and how rumors are like dainty morsels that sink deep into people. Because you see, church, when people have conflict and the information game be around them begins, it inflames, it creates confusion, tension, Quarrels and the beliefs that people form in these high intensity situations can stick with them for a long time. This is how our relationships get broken down, muddied. And I don't know if you knew this, but churches, they don't do the greatest at this, do they? In fact, sometimes churches are worse because they throw God on it, where it's like, well, we're the lovely, godly people, and they're the heathens who are believing lies and are evil, right? And when God looks down at his people who do this type of thing, it grieves him. And Satan is looking at us, and he's just like, yeah, keep it up, guys. You're doing great, right? Tearing each other down, riling each other up, keeping the quarrel going, creating dissension and division and operating according to our sinful natures, right? Our passage today tells us that what keeps these quarrels going, the building up of conflict is through gossip. Now, in the English translation, it says quarrels disappear when gossip stops, but in the Hebrew, it says where there is no whisperer or a nirgon, quarrels quiet down. And when it says rumors are dainty morsels, the Hebrew says the words of a whisperer are consumed greedily, right? What's the wisdom here? The wisdom is if you want to stop gossip, rumors, and slander, well, we need to stop being whisperers. If we can stop being whisperers, we can contain conflict into something manageable. But... If we and other people we know are whispers, then the quarrel grows. Kind of like a pandemic. You can't stop people from sneezing on each other, but if you could, you might have a st shot at stopping that pandemic, right? So how do we stop being whispers? And how do we stop other people who are whispers? And how do we as a community step into conflict situations to help resolve it quickly and in a healthy way? to de-escalate and help those conflicts die down before our communities get torn apart? How do we become peacemakers in conflict and not whisperers? Well, first, be waterlogged. Be waterlogged. 
Our passage talks about hot embers bouncing around, and when it lands on charcoal or it lands on wood, it flames up easily. So whenever someone comes to you to talk about their problems, or someone wants to come to you and gossip about someone else's problems, they're like a dancing flame coming to you. And you have a choice. You can either be lit up like a piece of charcoal or wood and become a whisperer to others, or you can sit there like a waterlogged piece of wood that smothers any ember that lands on it and does not let the flame spread. Another way to put it, we should be a community that when someone needs help with conflict, we help them to figure out the best way to deal with that conflict, and we stop the spread of information. That when you hear something, you commit to not spreading it. And when you hear something, you're guiding the person that came to you with that information to deal with it in a healthy way and keeping what you heard confidential. You keep the fire contained. We should not be a people who want to take sides. We should be a people who want to see the conflict end in healthy ways, right? If Bob and Sally comes to you to talk about the situation, then stop that spread of information with you. You can help them to deal with conflict in a healthy way. You're a waterlogged piece of wood, church, not prone to catching and spreading a fire. And if you're hearing about gossip from someone who is not Bob or Sally, then you just tell them, I don't need to hear this right now. In our previous diagram, right, can you bring up the second image, Samuel, where it's the family and friends? Perfect, thank you. What would it look like if the people around Sally and Bob right here just said, hey, we'll help you deal with this, right? We're not going to spread this information. We're not going to tell anyone else, but we will help you deal with this in a healthy way. Compared to when it starts spreading and spreading and camps are formed and the information gets weird and it becomes not primary sources, but now secondary, tertiary, quarterary, right? We need to reject allowing the fire to spread from us. And second, if someone approaches you and starts to gossip, if someone's being a whisperer, ask pointed questions of them. Not the type of questions that's going to lead to further gossip, right? But the type of questions that will make the whisperer think about what they are doing. These questions are for the people who hear things and they want to spread it further, right? So when a whisperer comes to you, one of my favorites is, hey, did Sally and Bob say you could share this with me? What kind of reaction are you going to get from someone who wants to gossip from that? Yeah? You usually get that deer in the headlight look like, and they stop talking to you about it, right? But let's say they're like, oh, well, I just thought you should know, right? That's the usual defense anyway. Like, I just felt like I should share this with you. Of course you did. You're a whisperer. But anyway, right? Then it's, what do you want me to do with this information? Right? And rarely is there a good answer to this question because whisperers, they just want to talk. They haven't thought about the why they're telling you. They just want to share. They just want to talk. They can't come up with a good reason why. Then, if they can't come up with a good reason why, you probably don't need to know the information, do you? And it can stop with you. And usually if we get to this point, right, they're starting to get upset that you're asking these pointed questions, right? And they'll probably stop talking to you and won't come to you again with gossip. Win-win, right, church? Win-win. Asking the right questions can allow you to confront a whisper and start making them think about what they are doing in the hopes that they'll stop. So if you're in a conflict and you need someone to talk to, church, you can seek some trusted people who can act like they're waterlogged and hold that information and help you. And if you're part of the community church and you start having people gossip or whisper things around you or to you, start asking these really important questions about permission to share things and what they want you to do with it as a way to stop the gossip. And now third, push back with the correct way to deal with conflict, right? Instead of gossip and rumors and building up camps of believers to your cause, encourage everyone who's a part of the situation to use Matthew 18. You guys remember Matthew 18? Kind of a big one around here when it comes to conflict, right? This is how Jesus told us to solve it. He tells us that first, if you're in conflict with someone, you should go to that person one-on-one -on -one and try and resolve it. 
The two people in the conflict should sit down and try and work it out as long as it's a safe place to be. But if that doesn't work, then they should get two or three witnesses or neutral people to come alongside and listen to what's going on and provide wisdom and counsel and guidance about what they can do. These are like the most waterlogged people in your church that you can think of, right? The somber, the wise people that you want to listen and help you resolve it. And then if that doesn't work and the conflict is not resolved, Jesus tells you, bring it to the church, right? Sin announcements, Sunday morning, we've had this conversation, right? After normal announcements, we'll just get up and talk about each other's sin, right? No, you can bring it to the church leadership board, right? Our board of overseers or the pastor to see if maybe there's a need for someone to take a break from the church and the community until they can change their hearts, right, to resolve the conflict. Jesus gives us Matthew 18 because it tells us how to manage sin and conflict in the church without all the gossip, rumors, and slander. He gives it to us to reduce division and dissension that arises when we try to build camps of people. And it helps us deal with things in a more direct, healthy way as a people of God. And one last thing as a reminder, right? The whisperer people, they're usually not spreading joyful news when they're talking about other people or actions in a good way, right? Usually it's like the spreading of negative things. Like you don't really hear people gossiping about like, hey, did you know that Judy bought a watermelon from the store? <laughs> I mean, watermelon's juicy, but that is not a juicy tidbit, right? right? They're trying to spread the tantalizing stuff, the really good stuff, right? So whenever a whisperer comes along and you've asked the probing questions to make them stop and you've reminded them of Matthew 18 and how we as a community should be directing people in conflict to that system that Jesus commanded us to, then we need to remember to speak blessings of everyone involved. Remind the whisperer how we're all made in God's image, right? We all make mistakes. We're all broken people in many ways. Why do you think there's conflict in the world? Are any of us perfect? But we're all trying the best we can with what we have. We're all trying to follow Jesus as best as we can. And so you can point to stories about Sally and her heart for Jesus, and you can speak about the good things of her. And you can point to stories about Bob that speak of his heart and the good things in his life. And church, it's like the anti-whisper, right? The juicy tidbits you're now giving out are blessings and people's hearts and the beauty that God is doing in them. And in this way, you're resisting the urge to join a camp or join a side because what you're doing is you're saying, we're all part of the same family here, right? We're all God's people. Yeah, we mess up. Yeah, we got some juicy tidbits that people would love to know about us. But that's not the point of our community. The very thing a whisperer wants you to do is to join them or join their side. And you're rejecting that. You're dispelling the notion that there's an us and a them. You're breaking down the wall of we're the good guys and they are the bad guys. You're reminding the whispers the values we hold dear at Branchline, that everyone is created in God's image. And when conflict arises, we deal with it in a healthy way. And we're going to choose the ways of Jesus, and we're going to pursue the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our actions, instead of giving in to our sinful natures that lead to division and dissension. So evident, guys, in the us versus them of politics and sports fans and wars, right? And we turn our community into a safer place, free from gossip, rumor, and slander. And we want to turn our community into a place when conflict happens, we all know how to put out the fire, right? And stop it from spreading. So let's pray. Father, as humans, we come before you and we seek your forgiveness in the way in which we spread the fire of gossip and rumor and slander. And Father, we pray for your forgiveness in that. And Father, we just ask that you would give us 
in these moments, the clarity, the Holy Spirit speaking to us, the desire in the heart to be different kinds of people in this world, that you would remind us not to be whisperers, not to be spreading the fire, but, Father, to be peacemakers who are keeping the conflict contained and helping people deal with it in healthy ways. And, Father, we just pray for all of the conflicts in our life, for all of the people that we're currently upset with or they're upset with us. Father, we just pray that you would work to soften hearts, our hearts first, and Father, if you can, their hearts as well. We pray, Father, that we would show them your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, your love, and not to follow our sinful ways of wanting to speak bad or to feel self-righteous or any of that. Father, you've called us as your church to share the gospel of your son, the weight of your forgiveness for us while we are yet in sin. And we pray that you would just make us into your people, people that you would be proud of, people that Satan hates and isn't cheering on. And Father, we just love you. We thank you for your words that give us wisdom and guidance. And we pray as we go from this place that you would just continue to walk with us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.